All right, we're back, and the Red Gobbo is built. Do a quick little tour. This is how he is all the way around. Got him nice and glued together. I've only put the plastic glue on him. Sometimes I'll go over afterwards with a um, super glue and I'll kind of give them a little coat of super glue in some places. Generally, if there's more delicate joints. Like, I don't know, like this here, where the um, string of lights is in his, his face, you know, is in his mouth. That's kind of, It's kind of hard to tell, but this is really not glued on. Um, like touching much surface. But really today what we're going to do is we're going to work on this base because I mentioned I'm kind of de christmasing him. I'm going to leave the star. I'm going to just paint it kind of like a brass or a bronze color. So it's, you know, not like a fancy gold star. But these little ornaments here, we got to do something with the bottom there. And, you know, sure, we could throw some texture over this. And I, I've got Armageddon dust from Citadel here. And this is really good stuff. I really like the Citadel Texture uh, basing paints. And you could use these, like, that's really the color it is. It's kind of this deserty color. So we wanted him to be a deserty color. We could do that. But I also like this color, this light desert color, because you can just prime right over it with whatever primer you want to use. So I think we're going to do that. But first, one last little piece, because he's got this kind of thing in his mouth, a string, and I, I wanted to keep that in there. I could have left it off. You'll notice it's not a string of lights anymore. What I'm hoping is to kind of get the idea that maybe he's chewed through some razor wire on the battlefield. And so I have some of the Army Painter razor wire. I think we're going to put a little bit of this on the base, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do two things at once. We're going to hide those Christmas bulbs and put some razor wire on at the same time. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to kind of get this unwrapped a little bit. Let's find an end and start uh, going for it. And it looks like actually both of the ends are here. Uh, so that's kind of handy. So you can, I guess, go either way. But what I want to do is I want to take some of this razor wire and I just grab a paintbrush. Just, you know, any brush will work. It doesn't, you don't care what tip you've got on it because you're going to use the back of it. And I like to just kind of roll it up using this as a guide into, into a little, um, you know, coil of sorts. You make it as tight as you want, really, and you just got to kind of roll it along there and just get a few few wraps and doesn't matter if you're neat with it because I'm imagining razor wire on the battlefield here is not going to look you know nice and pristine in fact the other thing we're doing with this is we're putting this on before we're priming the model so yeah it's just like a light wire with a little wrap around it it feels kind of rough it has a neat texture and from you know Six feet away, who's going to know? So I think I'm going to span it in between those two bulbs. I think I want just a couple more wraps here. And you can just stick your brush right back in there if you want to. Just do a couple more wraps. Just kind of wrap it around. You can do it like that too. I like to just kind of spin it sometimes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it so the two ends, so we've got an end here and an end here. They're both, you know, like down. They're both pointed down. Now, tempting as it might be, no using your sprue clippers to clip your razor wire. I mean, you could. I mean, they'll, they'll cut it, right? Whatever. But what I'm going to use is actually some kind of proper wire chompers. And I've got these old beefy suckers here. So we're going to just kind of do that. I'm just going to kind of stick that in. And there's the jaw right there. And I'm just going to kind of give it a nice little... Nice little clip, and there it is. Just clip it right off. All right, so there's our coil. It's down there on the on the table here. And then I'm going to take this uh, the razor wire spool here, and we're just going to kind of roll it back up, and then um, 
maybe roll this around like it was when it came to give it a little bit of stay. I think I'm going to find another spot to store this because you might have noticed the um, container that the Army Painter uses is huge compared to, you know, the razor wire in it. Uh, that's okay. You could use a container for something else, I suppose. I'm going to stick it in there for now. I'll find another spot in a drawer or something to put it in. But there we go. Here's our razor wire. Now, this is going to be maybe the tricky part to do while filming. So, I don't recommend uh, filming while putting on your razor wire. What you basically want to do is you want to glue it down onto the base of the model. Now, the base here, the base of the model here, uh, has got those, you know, those two little bulbs, and what I was kind of hoping to do is put the razor wire kind of around them and then cover it up with some of that Armageddon dust and kind of do both of those things at the same time. So I don't know, we'll kind of see how this goes. But what you basically want to do is super glue this to the base of your model. And so I've got just dollar store super glue. That's what I use. You could use the gel kind for this, actually. It might work really well in this scenario. I'm going to daringly try to do this on camera through the viewfinder here. And we'll see how it turns out. But you just want to kind of... Oh, I don't know. Dab a little bit on kind of the end. Uh, and maybe I should dab it on and then move the razor wire into there. But you do need to uh, use like a super glue. Well, here, this side's working out pretty good. The razor wire's right on that little Christmas bulb. We'll see if we can get it to see. You do need to use super glue for this because you can't use plastic glue because plastic glue uh, relies on kind of melting the plastic. And obviously um, the razor wire is uh, metal. So that's if you can't see that clearly on camera, it is de it is definitely metal. It is metal razor wire from the Army Painter there. So I'm going to kind of hold that into that glue. We're going to see if we can get it to set. And then we'll come back and we'll put some of that Armageddon dust on there. So we'll see you in just a bit. All right, we're back after a quick little budget cut there. They cut our budget and so we do budget cuts. Is that how it works? I don't know. Anyways, this has had, uh, you know, a couple minutes to dry. You can still see it's a little shiny on there. It is going to stay slightly shiny. That's one thing with super glue. We're going to go ahead and try adding some of this Armageddon dust uh, texture paint. And when you read about this or watch videos on it, you'll see I say you should use something, not a brush to apply this. So, I mean, it's a paint, but you don't really use a brush to apply it. If you kind of look at it, it's this, you know, it's basically paint with some kind of texture inside it. Now, mine's mostly dried up up top there, but this bottom part's still got some life left in, in it. So, we're going to kind of stir this up and, and hope for the best here uh, today. This stuff is, I would say, notorious for drying out uh, in the thing. So, you know, people will say, oh, I don't like Citadel paints because they dry out in the in the pot. Uh, texture paint is definitely something I agree with them on. But honestly, uh, Citadel's texture paints are the best I've found, and so I'm going to keep using them, uh, really, even though, you know, I'm going to have to keep more when they dry out. So you see the the um, razor wires on there pretty good. We're kind of pushing around here a little bit of this texture paint. So you just use a uh, they say you use a tool on it, and they have these you know plastic spudgers or whatever. I like to use a wooden coffee stir stick, and the reason is uh, for me at least these are readily available. I have coffee supplies around everywhere, and so. Pretty much from my hobby desk I can reach and grab and most of the time I'm gonna get a coffee stir stick 
okay, maybe not quite, but um, definitely something. So now we've got kind of, we'll put a little bit of texture on that one. You know, it's looking kind of okay. I'm going to push a little bit more and then we're going to kind of push it towards there. The other thing you'll notice we're doing, not just covering up those little like Christmas baubles, what we're really doing also is adding a little different texture to this uh, base here. And I definitely wanted to kind of get in um, a little bit of the, uh, towards where the joint is down here. We, we got that good in plastic glued together, but I do want to add just a little bit of texture. And, and really, no wrong way to do this. I mean, almost the rougher it looks, the better. If you want to smooth it out, you can. I got a little bit on my thing there, on the razor wire there. I'm going to try to push a little bit more up and over this bobble here. So we're going to see if we can kind of do that. And, uh, you know, here's a tip. If you only have one of these and you need two, just break it. Now you've got two, right? You can't do that with the, um, with the professional texture tools. I mean, I guess you could, but those things are expensive. Why would you want to break it in half? So I'm just going to kind of scooch that in there. Give it a little scooch, scoochy, scooch, scooch. And you know, what if from the front it looks a little rounded underneath? Yeah, you've got, you know, some poor skull or something that got stuffed under there sometime. So I'm going to kind of spooch this around. Now, I don't want to cover up this grenade. I like the grenade. So I'm not going to cover up that. But I'm going to kind of spooch some texture around here. Just kind of, you know, it's a technical word, spooch. And we're going to put a little bit on the front here because we don't want the texture difference to feel too weird, you know. And so this model is not primed. Uh, we're going to prime it later. Try to save your texture here. So we're going to try to... You can't see that real well because the camera doesn't like focusing on tiny things. There it goes. But I'm going to kind of put as much of this back into the pot as I can. And, you know, again, you saw when I opened it up, it is getting pretty dried out. I have I've used this on quite a few models, but like this up here is kind of getting dried out. Down in the bottom, it's still pretty good. Up in the top here, it's almost all dried out. So I would say uh, with one of these pots, if you work fairly quickly, like if you just do it all in one session, I mean, you could base... Uh, you know, the better part of an army with one of uh, the little texture pots. And this is one of the little ones that comes in, like, one of the paint sets. You can get the bigger ones if you get, uh, actually, like, buy it by the pot. Uh, but there you go. There's our texture. It's going to dry. And uh, when it does, it'll basically just hardens. It doesn't do a lot else when it dries. And then we're going to prime the model which will include priming that razor wire, so we are going to then paint that. And I like the idea that maybe the squig is kind of like jumping over it, and that's, uh, you know, it already tore through some, and it's kind of hanging out of its mouth, but it's going to jump over this piece, and we'll see. If you want to, you can actually use some of these sticks and make little, like, cross, you know, like the X's that are on the ends of the razor wire, things like that. But you sure don't have to. So, there you go, that's, uh... Little basing tutorial. That's all we're going to do to base our red gobbo. So it's kind of like a basing tutorial, kind of a review of the razor wire, kind of a review of the texture. I would honestly give the Citadel texture paints probably a solid A. Uh, you know, they do dry out, uh, but otherwise they are amazing. Um, the only other thing I would probably dock the grade for is you can't find the matching paint for all of them. Uh, there's a few that you can find the matching paint for, and that's really handy. Uh, but otherwise, I'd say they're they're a solid A. This um, Army Painter Razor Wire, uh, that's um, that's pretty good. I'm gonna, I'd probably give that an A also. It's um, metal, which is nice. You don't you don't have to worry about mixing the metal and the plastic. That's just fine. It works just fine. I would say um, uh, cons is. When you got it close up there, it does kind of look more like a weird spoolage of wire rather than razor wire. You get it back at any distance on the table, though, and it is such a good approximation. Like, I put my... see if I can get the camera to stay focused in one area. Like, right there. Like that. It'll stay focused on the gobbo here. 
you know, that looks like razor wire from that distance, and we're not all that far away. Camera kind of messes with that with the lens a little bit. So I would say that's really nice. Uh, downside of it is now you get four meters for not too much money. I mean, it's I, for me, that's probably a lifetime supply. So I would say that if you're trying to use a bunch of this, I would suggest uh, get some of those old fuzzy craft things, pipe cleaners or what I used to call them when I was a kid. I, they got fancier names for them now. Uh, but you take that and you take a lighter and you just burn off the fuzz. And uh, it just, uh, you know, just flame it off. You can use that for your razor wire as well. It'll give a nice little, little texture there too. So if you want to try that, you sure can. Maybe I'll do that in another video. But there you go. There's the Red Gobbo. We'll see if we can get him primed. And he'll be back in another video. Thanks for watching.